That was absolutely freezing. Every time I'm up the west coast of Scotland, I come to this beach at Torridon. If you're in the area, you've got to come here because it has the finest free seafood that you can imagine. I mean, it's it's not like last week's video where you're scraping around for limpets and winkles. This is proper seafood. We've got big juicy mussels, cockles that are as big as your hand, and it's the, the, the seas around here are so pure and so clean you don't actually have to do a lot with them in fact you can actually eat them raw but I prefer to cook them so I'll go collect a few cockles and a few mussels and we're gonna have a seafood feast well that's if the oyster catchers don't get there before us We played hide and seek for hours Raised our shadows among the pines So offshore playful and free Without a care in the world I was one rich little girl Daydreamer kidnap me Take me back all the way back to the day So much food around here. We've actually got razor clams, um, not my favourite, and quite a bit trickier to catch. Maybe that's a, a video for another day. And there's whelks, and uh, quite a feast. But I think I had enough of the rubbery stuff last week, so we'll stick to his cockles, mussels. I did actually find a few clams as well, and they're really sweet. So onwards and upwards. Summer's catching fireflies, and winter's on our skate. One big smile across my face We used to dance our way to church on Sundays Mama set the pace Daydream of working and made Take me back, all the way back to them days Running around in a gown and a crown This channel is not about to turn into a cooking channel. What I'm trying to show here is how cheap you can live when you're living on the road. This bread cost about 70p. Uh, celery's cheap anyway and I bought a leek. I think it was 25p. Granted I bought a bottle of wine which I'd have probably bought anyway. And the rest of the stuff, oh, apart from the cream, has come from the sea. So for just over a pound I've got a fantastic meal. Well, proof of the pudding is in the eating. That is seriously good food. Oh, you have to excuse me. Go enjoy your pizza. So I've made a detour down to a place called Elgo. Actually, as I've got here, it's clagged in again, which is typical, but that's, that's the, the name of the game, it's part of the game. Now, Elgol is a very, very well photographed location. It's done to death, to be honest, but rightly so, because it's beautiful. So, I try and challenge myself sometimes to come away with something different. Um, it's that, that's going to be hard, because there's a, at least a dozen photographers down there on a Tuesday night in February. 
So you can imagine the, the amount of photographs that get taken of this place. So instead of getting in the way of all the other photographers down there, I've actually seen something from up the, up the top in the car park, so I'm going to be really lazy, uh, and I'm going to go for like, it's a black and white scene, so it's going to be more or less a black and white photograph, and it's going to be very abstract. Now what I'm trying to capture here is, with the sea being so wild, it's leaving this lovely white surf that's leading you off to this smaller rock and then off to the silhouetted mountain in the background. Now I'm using a polarizer, which is taking the glare off the black rocks in the bottom right of the, the image and also the glare off the sea. So we've got this nice contrast. Um, I'm actually exposing for the white surf, which is making the sea and the black rocks even darker. It may not work, but like I say, sometimes when you go to these locations, You've got, got to try and challenge yourself to come away with something a little bit different and even if it doesn't work, I think it can help you grow as a photographer. gathered I'm back in Glencoe. Um, long story short my phone died and I found out the nearest place to get it fixed was either Inverness on the other coast or Fort William which is just around the corner from here so it was an easy choice really I've ended up back at Glencoe. Now the last time I were here it, it was a proper winter wonderland it was just absolutely plastered with snow but that snow's nearly all gone but what they have had is a couple of days of torrential downpours so the shot that I've got now is uh, I've, I've, be, I've seen it before but it only seems to work when there's a lot of water in it when, when there's not much water in the river it gets very messy and um, it's a classic sort of Glencoe type shot really where you've got the river curling around leading up to the mountain in the background now I've checked the histogram and we've virtually got nothing in the middle everything's either blown out because the sky's too bright at the moment or it's beyond the left hand side in beyond the shadows if you like so I can't use a split grad filter because of the shape of the mountains and I can't bracket my exposures because it's quite windy and the trees will be moving so that, that's not possible either. But if I wait around about half an hour I should be able to manage to get it in one shot hopefully so we'll just hang around a bit and see what we get. Okay that sun's going down now and the sky's a lot more manageable. I've just checked the histogram, everything's where I want it to be and there's not much else I can tell you really. I'm, I'm using a polarizer, shooting at f11 there will be one exposure, job done. Now next week I'll be back in England because I've had some news in England so I've got to go back to England to sort a few things out. So the next episode will be nearer home, maybe Yorkshire or the Lake District, somewhere like that. So I hope you've enjoyed this week's episode and um, I'll see you next time. <laughs> <laughs>